Hi! In this tutorial, you will learn how to use the Power Apps lookup function in a SharePoint list. Let's get started. Okay, so what is the lookup function? The lookup function allows you to search for values in your data source. In this case, we are using SharePoint. I have already created a table a list here on SharePoint, which is this one, products. It has two products, notebook and mouse. These are the prices and the quantities of each of them. Now let's go back to Power Apps. And the first thing that we need to do is to connect to that table. So I'm going to go here to add data. I'm going to look for SharePoint. Here it is. I'm going to click here, connect to it, and then select the store site and I'm going to connect to the, to the products list. Click connect. Okay, now it is available for us to use. Now let's start creating our app. I'm going to insert some controls here. First, let's call this one price. Then I'm going to insert a text input, which is going to be text input price. Okay, we can remove the content of it. Okay, now let's add another one. Text label, and this is going to be the product product and we're going to insert another text label which is where the product is going to be displayed the idea is that we type the price here and it's going to look for a product that has that price and displayed here so and to do that we're going to replace the content of that label so instead of text we're going to create our lookup function here and the lookup function is going to go like this lookup open and close parentheses and the first parameter is the name of the list. In this case, it is products, and it already displays here. Okay, type comma. And the second parameter is the condition, which is the query that we want to make on the data source to retrieve the value, which is going to be price equals to text input price, which is this one, dot text. And there is an error here, and the error here says that it is a record that it is returning but we don't want to return a whole record we want to return just the content of one field which is the name of the product so to do that we type dot product okay and there is still an error here and the reason for that is that the content here is of type text while the price column has a number value so we need to convert the content to number to do that we add value and put the text input price dot text between parentheses. Okay, now it's ready. Let's preview our app. First click save, then click preview. Then let's go to SharePoint and take a look here. So mouse costs $12. So I'm gonna type here 12. And here it is. The lookup function found mouse. The notebook costs 1000 so here is notebook what if we type a value that doesn't exist in the database it doesn't find anything and that's what the lookup function does now let's do another thing here let's say that i want to search for the product that has the price 1000 and also has a specific quantity so i'm going to add the quantity field i'm going to call this quantity okay and i'm going to insert a text input and call this text input quantity let's remove the content okay and then in our lookup function we can add a new parameter here we can say and quantity equals text input quantity dot text and same thing here we need to convert it so I'm going to put value and pass the content of the text input to the value function. Okay, now let's save and preview the app again. Okay, now if we inform price 1000, it doesn't find the product because we need to also inform the quantity. Notebook, there's one unit. So if we inform one, then it finds notebook because it finds the products that have price 1000 and quantity equals 1. If we change this number, 
notebook doesn't match the criteria anymore and it's not displayed. Okay, let's close this. And you can also use instead of and, you could use or. Now let's preview the app again and see. Now, even when the quantity doesn't match because this field match the price, then the product is found. If neither one of them match, then the product is not found. If just one of them match, it is enough. Okay, let's change it back to end. Another thing that you can do with the lookup function is a calculation. So let's do that. For that, I'm going to add a new text label. I'm going to position it here. Call it total. And then I'm going to insert a text input. Move it close to the total label. Remove the content. And in this specific field, I'm going to add a text label. Move it here. Remove the content. And in this label, we're going to add a new lookup function. And the basis of this lookup function is going to be the same of our last one. So let's click here and copy that. And then I'm going to paste it here on the new one. And now we're going to do one change here in this function. Instead of displaying the product name, let's remove that. We're going to display a calculation. And to do that, you can come here, type another comma, and the result is going to be price times quantity. OK, let's save and preview the app. Let's find our notebook and it displays the notebook here and the total, which in this case is just 1000 times 1. What about the mouse? The mouse is $12 and the quantity is 3. So if we change price to 12 and quantity to 3, which matches the criteria, so it finds that record and it gives the total here. Now let's think about one last situation. What happens if there is more than one record in your data source that matches the condition of your lookup function? Which record will be retrieved? Let's do that test. Let's go to the SharePoint list. Let's change the price of the mouse to also 1000 and the quantity also to 1. That's a pretty expensive mouse. OK, now both notebook and mouse have the same price and quantity. Now let's go to Power Apps, run the application again, and change the query. Price 1000, quantity 1. And it retrieved the notebook. Reason is, it will always get the first record of your data source. That's how the lookup function behaves. If your use case has more than one record that matches the criteria, then you might consider using something like a filter. But that's a topic for another video. If you liked this video, please click like. And if you want to learn more about Power Apps, click subscribe.